Welcome to an introduction to the Laplace transform. The Laplace transform is a very efficient method to solve certain ODE and PDE problems. The Laplace transform takes a differential equation and turns it into an algebraic equation. If the algebraic equation can be solved, applying the inverse Laplace transform gives us a desired solution. The Laplace transform also gives a lot of insight into the nature of the equations we are dealing with. It can be seen as converting between the time and the frequency domain. For example, take the standard differential equation, mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx equals f of t. We can think of t as time and f of t as an incoming signal. The Laplace transform will convert the equation from a differential equation in time to an algebraic equation where the new independent variable is s, the frequency. We can think of the Laplace transform as a black box. It eats functions and spits out functions in a new variable. We write the notation shown here for the Laplace transform of f of t equals big F of s. It is common to write lowercase letters for functions in the time domain and uppercase letters for functions in the frequency domain. We use the same letter to denote that one function is the Laplace transform of the other. For example, big F of s is the Laplace transform of little f of t. And below we have the definition of the Laplace transform. The Laplace transform of f of t is equal to big F of s, which is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the power of negative st times f of t dt. So again, this is our definition of the Laplace transform. We note that we are only considering t greater than or equal to zero in the Laplace transform. Of course, if we think of t as time, there is no problem. We are generally interested in finding out what will happen in the future. And now let's compute some Laplace transforms. Let's begin with f of t is equal to one. Then using our definition in the blue box below, we have the Laplace transform of one is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the power of negative st times one dt, of course, we can drop the one. Notice to integrate, we need to perform u substitution, which I've shown here on the left, where u is equal to negative st, du is equal to negative s dt. Solving for dt, we have dt is equal to one divided by negative s, which gives us the antiderivative of e to the power of negative st divided by negative s, where the limits of integration are from t equals zero to infinity. Because we have an upper limit of integration of infinity, we know we have an improper integral, which we rewrite using limit notation, shown here in the next step, where we replace infinity with h, and we have the limit as h approaches infinity of the antiderivative from t equals zero to h. So in the next step, we find big F of h minus big F of zero. Notice big F of zero is equal to one divided by negative s because e to the power of zero is equal to one. Now to find this limit, it might be helpful to rewrite e to the power of negative sh divided by negative s, as I've shown here in blue in the upper right hand corner, as one over the product of negative s and e to the power of sh. Notice in this form, it's easy to see when h approaches infinity, this fraction approaches zero, giving us zero minus one divided by negative s, or one over s, for the Laplace transform of f of t equals one. It is important to remember that the limit and the improper integral only exists when s is greater than zero, so the Laplace transform of one is only defined for s greater than zero. And now let's find the Laplace transform of f of t equals e to the power of negative at. Again, applying the definition, we have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the power of negative st times e to the power of negative at dt. Because we have a common base here, to multiply we add the exponents and factor out a negative, which gives us an integrand function of e to the power of negative, the quantity s plus a times t. Again, to integrate, this requires u substitution, which I've shown on the left in blue, where u is equal to the opposite of the quantity s plus a times t. Notice dt is equal to one divided by the opposite of the quantity s plus a, giving us an antiderivative of e to the power of the opposite of the quantity s plus a times t, all divided by negative the quantity s plus a. And again, because the upper limit of integration is infinity, we should take the time to write this as a limit, which I've done here below in blue. Also notice I moved e to the power of the opposite of the quantity s plus a times t down to the denominator to make it easier to determine the limit. Notice in this form, we can see as h approaches infinity, this first fraction approaches zero, 
leaving us with zero minus one divided by the opposite of the quantity s plus a, which simplifies to one divided by the quantity s plus a, which is the Laplace transform of f of t equals e to the power of negative at. In this case, the limit only exists if s plus a is greater than zero, and therefore the Laplace transform of e to the power of negative at is only defined for s plus a greater than zero. Let's take a look at one more example. Here we're given f of t is equal to t, and therefore the Laplace transform of t is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the power of negative st times t dt, which is going to require integration by parts. And again, I've shown that work here on the left, where u is equal to t and dv is equal to e to the power of negative st dt. We differentiate to find du, du is equal to dt. We integrate to find v, which we did in our first example, v is equal to negative e to the power of negative st divided by s. Below on black, I've applied the integration by parts formula, but of course we have an improper integral, which gives us the second line here. Evaluating the first part, we get zero, and then we have plus one divided by s times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the power of negative st dt, which gives us the next line, where the antiderivative is e to the power of negative st divided by negative s. Again, because the upper limit is infinity, I did show the limit notation below. And again, notice how I moved the negative exponent down to the denominator to make it easier to evaluate the limit. The result is one divided by s squared for the Laplace transform of f of t equals t. And this Laplace transform exists only when s is greater than zero. By applying similar procedures, we can compute the Laplace transforms of many elementary functions. Many basic Laplace transforms are listed below in table 6.1, where c, omega, and a are all constants. The only function that might stand out is u of t minus a, which is the unit step function or heaviside function, which we'll discuss more in the next lesson. Linearity is also helpful when determining Laplace transforms. Linearity of the Laplace transform states, suppose that a, b, and c are constants. Then the Laplace transform of a times f of t plus b times g of t is equal to a times the Laplace transform of f of t plus b times the Laplace transform of g of t. And in particular, the Laplace transform of c times f of t is equal to c times the Laplace transform of f of t. These rules together with the table below make it more manageable to find the Laplace transform of a whole lot of functions already. But we need to be careful. It is a common mistake to think that the Laplace transform of a product is a product of the Laplace transforms. In general, the Laplace transform of f of t times g of t does not equal the Laplace transform of f of t times the Laplace transform of g of t. It must also be noted that not all functions have a Laplace transform. For example, the function one divided by t does not have a Laplace transform as the integral diverges for all s. Similarly, tangent t and e to the t squared do not have Laplace transforms. I hope you found this introduction helpful.